out here. Boom. What's happening? What's happening? What's happening? This is the student master teacher, Mr. I Stay Woke, Chris Monroe, and I'm right back at you with another real estate video. Today, I'm about to make a call on a pre-foreclosure. Uh, looks like they have an auction date coming up of January 5th. Uh, we reached out through text message, and uh, this is the initial call. Let's see how it goes, see if we can help her out. Miss Kathleen, trying to live that American dream. So don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, give it a like, give it a share, and we up in here. Hey, Kathy, this is Chris. We were texting earlier this morning. How are you? I'm okay. Good. Did you have a couple moments now? Uh, yeah, let me find something to write with if I may. Perfect. Yeah, that would be great. All right, I'm ready. Yeah, so yeah, my name is Chris. I'm with St. Louis Cash Bars. And what we do is buy houses um, all over St. Louis in the area here. And I specialize in helping people who are having problems with the bank. Um, I guess you said something was going on with your property with the bank. St. Louis Cash Bars. I'm going to send you my information uh, via text after this call too, so you'll have it. Okay, perfect. So I'm just trying to figure out what is uh what is your overall goal here? Are you uh do you actually want to sell your property? I am sixty forty to to sell. Well, any event you were in the event you were uh able to sell it, did you have a place to move to and stuff already, or how would you work that out? No, I have no place in it. I have a couple of renters. Um, I'm just kind of stuck right now. I've been going through this for four years with this bank. Okay, and that's why I'm so far behind. Through the modifications, through COVID, through so many different things that have, they have dropped the ball. I don't know what they did that was illegal, but they did something. And they, they made the pot very sweet. Unfortunately, I was thinking I missed the window. Wow. I'm not the, uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, because I saw online it says something about an auction is scheduled for January 5th. Is that what you have as well? Fourth. January 4th. Oh, wow. Even sooner. Well, I mean, uh, what what is going on with the lender? What have they told you so far? Well, um, that it's back in foreclosure. It didn't anything really. I haven't talked to them a while. How, I've been through losing the house five times now since COVID started. Oh, and every wow. time I pulled it out, twice, three times I pulled out with um, filing bankruptcy, but not filing bankruptcy, just going through the motions and then dropping it. Yeah. Oh, so like that fake bankruptcy where you really don't go through with it, just file it so they can stop the sale? Yeah. Well, I'll take it was $400, but yes, that is it. Yeah, we yeah that's a last minute strategy we've used in the past on situations like this. But I guess you've exhausted that. Um, so what? It, what I that one more time, I can pull this out, but I don't have anybody to talk to. Now what? It, I, I did it was out in New York today. It did it for me. Oh okay. So what is it? How, what is the amount they told you that it is in arrears? Like if you wanted to catch up the loan and bring it current, what is that amount? I'm going to check through a paper. It doesn't have my name or information on it, but it's just, it's still a lot of paper I got from them. Is that okay? Yeah, that's fine. What is it, a mortgage statement? Yeah, yeah that's fine. Okay. Yeah, you sound like you've been through this song and dance a few times, huh? Oh, I'm just over it. Pardon me once you just be good. Yeah, I know it can definitely be very... I'm sorry, I'm sorry for this. I don't want to leave. I don't know what to do. I keep waiting for God to give me a good answer. Maybe you're my answer. I don't know. I'm looking for this paper here. And I copied it a while, a few days ago. 
Yeah. Oh. Hey Chris, is that you? Okay. Okay. Him, you know, he's the guy who's actually working. I gave it to him. He said, no, he couldn't help me. Um, oh. And then the lady that was talking to me, she said she didn't do anything with it either. So, um, hang tight there. Well, I mean, I, I'm not sure. So, so they said. I mean, so you might be able to help me. Well, if you're actually looking to sell the house, I'm the guy. Now, if it's talking about, you know, extending the auction and, you know, trying to keep the house and all of that, I probably would not be the best solution, just being honest with you. But if you are looking to sell it, I'm sorry, what's that? Do you know anybody who would be able to help me? If that's the way I go, I haven't decided yet. Um, I can check my, uh, you know, my friends and things and see, but... You know, the, to be honest, when it gets to a certain point, uh, you know, they, they have to either restructure that loan so that you can keep paying it if you want to keep the house. But if you are looking right. to sell it, that's a different strategy. So it's all going to depend on what the numbers are and the situation and your income, because they have to approve it for them to. So have you tried to do a loan modification of some type already with them? Five times, we did it. And so, to make that few things two or three times, so I know you can only do that so many times a year, and I don't even know if that would be an option at this point for me. I can't have time to show the paper, but I will. Hang on. Hang on. Um, in my gallery. I know I just sent it to our top speaker. But if you just hang with me for a second, then. Yeah, take your time. Yeah, it's no rush. I'm just trying to, you know, gather the information so I can see what options are available. Because every case is different, and I, I am able to work some magic, but not all the magic. <laughs> you know, you know, like I said, we've got to you here. You're talking to me for some reason. And this guy was the one, two gentlemen that was trying to get me to do this. They were very, they needed the job, they needed the work, and I felt really bad for them. I mean, I didn't commit to them, obviously, but. What were they trying to do? They were trying to purchase the property or what? Well, he was going to try to do a short sale for me, but because it was not the right way, he, didn't, he was unable, unable to do it. Now, what is it that made them believe that a short sale was the best option? Is the property need a lot of work or something? Or? It needs work, but not. It's got a new furnace. I put new windows on it several years ago. Um, it needs painting and real flooring and just cosmetic stuff mostly. Okay. Well, it kind of took its toll on everything around here during um, 2020, 2021. Yeah. And everything that could possibly happen, happened. Yeah. And, yeah. It seems like it's quite a bit of uh, people going through this now, still from COVID, from 2020 and 21, still having auctions and things come up now. I got a ticket. I got a no insurance ticket from COVID. And August of 22, because I didn't have a car, I didn't have insurance, I lost somebody else to try to go to work, doctor, and doctor, and I got stopped, got a ticket. Bill Arnold gave me four points, and I asked up this woman apparently, and she decided she's going to go back, so all the way back to January 2020, found something, got me four more points, I lost my license, lost my insurance, I'm losing my house, I just... So it's a lot going on, huh? Over the floor. I can't find this darn paper, but um, it's, I probably owe 100, and it's close to half of that that I'm behind. Or, like I said, four years. I don't know what they did. They had their lawyer call me and they were trying to convince me to let go of the house about a year ago. And we were talking, and I told them what I had been through with you. I think I have everything documented, and what I had been through with them is hell and high water. Because the COVID had just, it tore them up. They wouldn't let you have a representative to help you. If everybody's living, you got good luck with that. Didn't answer calls. I knew it was really bad. So I was talking to this lawyer and I told him, I said, oh, he said, well, you know, having a house since 2008, he said, that's a long time. I said, what? He said, your house, you had it since 2008. I said, no, I had it since 1999. That's a long time. He goes, oh my God. And then he started saying, well, I got to go out and write an email. I got to write an email. And then he said, I'll call you back and you got so, and that was with U.S. Bank, you said? U.S. Bank, yeah. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. 
they had me down with, I refinanced it away with them from another rent, a lender. But the fact that they thought I'd only owned the house is, is exactly what I was telling them. Everything that I talked to you guys about, people write it down the way they write it down, just like Social Security. They wrote it down the way they wrote it down, and next time it reads it, reads it differently, and next time, next time, next time. When you can't tell every person to talk to, you guys tell your whole story every time, or they don't answer the phone, or it was, it was really bad for a long time. I thought I was losing my house four different times now, four or five, I don't remember anymore. Okay. So are you, uh, do you have an income now to be able to pay for it and stuff, or? Well, you know, my payments were $553, and yes, I have, a, I get $2,400 a month in Social Security. Plus, I was working, which was hard for me, because I was working a job with, um, right, driving people, elderly people, and people who, uh, was trying to get their lives back together from jobs and stuff, so we get lost with one organization, and since I lost my license, I can't do that, and the way I lost my license was illegal, and I can't find an attorney to help me with it, I can't find anybody to help me, so look at $4,000, they say. Well, yeah, they get pretty expensive. So yeah. let me, yeah, they get pretty expensive. So let me ask you this, uh, Kathy. How would you see all this working out in a perfect case scenario for you? Find more leads than you can even process. That's multiple listing service. That's the MLS for your real estate agents. Absentee owner information. Find the cash buyers and flippers in any market nationwide. Pull a pre-foreclosure list. And don't forget, you got to find those comps. Get nationwide access with multiple filters powered by PropStream at WokeSource.com. Get your seven-day free trial today. WokeSource.com. That's WokeSource.com. So, so let me, yeah, they get pretty expensive. So let me ask you this, uh, Kathy. How would you see all this working out in a perfect case scenario for you? Well, like I said, I'm 60, 40 split on keeping this thing. I'm just looking for a sign from the good Lord. If, you know, this plays out the way it's headed now, I will have to do what I have to do or lose it. Um, if there's a guy, I don't feel like I'm supposed to be gone. Does that make sense? Yeah, I definitely understand because I mean, you'd be in a place for a long period of time. You feel like, you know, it's my home. Yeah, one time you was a grandkids were raised here. I mean, no, I'm not a whole sociologist. You think you can pull together some stuff and then some some guy that I do, you don't have to do it right now. You see what you guys do? I'll find this paper, this this print it, and um, I'll send you a copy. Do you know up the approximate arrears? How much did they say to catch up the loan? Well, it was um, two months ago. It was thirty-five. Thirty-five thousand. Yeah. I told you that we were upside down. Okay, that's not a problem. Um, yeah, we. we okay, you tell me. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I just, yeah. I just try to gather all the information so I can see the best plan of action to actually, you know, first is going to have to stop the auction. That's the first process. Um, you know, and then two, if you uh, if you are looking to sell the house, like I said, we would be the well, people to buy it. Come up with something that would head that way because right now I have nothing. Now, I, would, I would definitely keep entertain the idea most seriously. And and so, and so when you so yeah. when so when you spoke to U.S. Bank and uh, did they give you an option where they could put those arrears on the back of the loan or something like that? Initially, yes. Now, I don't know now because initially I was working with um, Safer, S A F H R, Safe Housing Fund. Yeah, we and dealt with them. I was approved. I was approved. But for whatever reason, I could not get the building on their stupid application right, and they denied it twice. So I had to redo it. I just gave up. I gave up everything. I'm so screwed up right now. But then they paid 30 something thousand on the house. And they still would. And I just asked them if I could pull out another application. I just think it's going to take too long. You can't just come in the last. But they already know me. And they, they remember me. So I'm going out the application now for that to see if they would pay the back part of it. The only problem with that is, and, and this is the problem before the reason the verbiage was, because six months before COVID started, I think they counted it in January and March of 2020. Um, my boyfriend passed away, and I was six months behind on the payment already because sometimes it seemed I didn't have any money. 
you know, fix all the bills that we had together. I do now with my bills, but we had an RV and we had so many things. And that's been a while. But anyway, so if I could pay those fixed payments, they would do it. So getting it was horrible because they couldn't talk to your bank unless I was out of foreclosure mode. Your bank couldn't talk to the bank unless they made a commitment that they would entertain, you know, paying off the loan. So it went back and forth, I wrote it 16 different ways, and the U.S. Bank, it was both at the so they had, and maybe that's what they were, you know, thinking that they were in trouble about, I don't know. But I couldn't get them to, to talk to each other. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's because they cannot speak to them without your permission. And usually they get an authorization to release information. It's basically a third party uh, letter for them to speak to the bank. And sometimes you have to almost get on a three way call, say, hey, I have him on here and I have them on here. Let's make this thing work, you know. And I understand it can be difficult. It was really frustrating and I love it. And but at one point they did talk before the last uh, foreclosure and then they denied it because um something tickled so they gave me a person to talk to to help me write it and i did it's still wrong yeah i, I don't know what they expect and maybe they just didn't want to do it i don't know yeah it's kind of tricky you know it's government agencies so they you know they got a lot of loopholes to jump through to get that money but you know it can be done so you said your payment was about Right. So you said your payment is supposed to be five fifty three a month. Is that what I heard? Yeah, now they would have been if I, yeah, if I were paying them. Um, and, and that would include nine hundred dollars a month regularly with the modification. Oh, so so as of right now, it's about nine hundred a month. Is what you're saying? No, five five three. Five five three, yeah. and that it. And that includes the taxes and insurance? Yes. Okay. An extra? Right. Is there a HOA? Is there a HOA there or something like that? Yeah. How much is that? Yeah. Right at 300 a year. 300 a year. HOA, making all the money. So yeah, Kathy, uh, I'll be I'll be more be more than happy to look at your uh your situation, see if we can help you. If you can get that mortgage statement sent over to me, that would be great. Um, and then we can. I'm pretty sure you are. So if that gives you any sense of security there. So if if you if pull that paper together. Yeah, no problem. So if you were able to get everything together there, I mean, what would it take? I mean, would you have a possibility way to move to a new place, or you would? How would you do that? That's what I'm trying to figure out. That's what I asked the guy. Would there be any possibility of getting any kind of money back? Because what do they call that in the house? So that I that old, you know, I built equity in the house, and losing all of that's going to kill me. You know what I have? Because I mean, I paid seventy-two for this house, and it could go for like a hundred and I don't know. That's a real thing. I don't remember. But if there's any possibility to get a dime out of this house, I knew I could do that. Perfect. So. Uh, so, so, so what I would say, yeah, step one is get that mortgage statement. Step two, if you do want me to speak to uh, your bank and see what options are available, we would have to get that third party authorization so we can speak to U.S. Bank. Um, I guess you already filled out one with them before. Is that correct? For something, yes, I did. Okay. So we, we would just have to get a new one. That's, 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 the person or company specific, you can't just say you can talk to anybody. Okay. So, yeah, so that would be our main thing is number one, stop the auction. And then uh, if, you, if you're looking to sell it, we would be the ones to buy it. And we would try to make it so you get something in your pocket so you are able to move. That's what I'm just trying to figure out. That's that's yeah. one of the biggest things, you know. Right. Well, well that's a lot of places and friends. Hold on one second, please. I'm trying to run that for government organizations to know tons of people. They would help me find the place to do it. And if I had a couple of lunches here, they would make up too. You wouldn't be a master. Damn. I'm saying, I mean, it could happen. I just, I think I've been in denial. 
anyway, I will get those reprinted and I will copy them for you. If you'd like to take my email address and send me your information, I'd greatly appreciate it. Okay, I'm going to send you a text right now with my information. You can just reply back with your email and everything, and then I'll have it in here. So I'll have it uh, in the system and make sure I spell it right and everything. All right? Other than that, Kathy, I'll just check back with you. Is it better to check back later this afternoon? Is that okay? Yes. Okay. Um, from three to four, I'm picking my brother up from work. So either, excuse me, before that or after uh, 4 30. So after 4 30. Okay. That's fine. Yeah, because I want to go ahead and get something okay. going here because you only have a short amount of time to make a move on it and, you know, get this stopped. Any other questions for me for now before I let you go? No, so yeah, I appreciate you very much. I will send you these copies. I want to bring personal information, but then you have the total. Yeah, that's fine. And that's all we needed the numbers from the lender, the mortgage, you know, all of that stuff, interest rate, all of that's on there. So that'll be fine. I'll be looking for that. And, uh, and I'll be looking for you. I'll speak to you this afternoon, okay? I will send it ASAP. Thank you, sir. God bless you. Thank you. Bye bye. So there we go. Uh, another seller that's not even just motivated, got pain, like upset about this whole situation. Um, I don't know if I can really save her, to be honest, because if she's thinking about trying to keep the house, I don't really get into that. You know, some people like to do that, but that's not really my thing. I look to actually buy it. I don't want to pressure somebody to buy it, but if she do want to sell it, we want to find a way to buy it. Um, but there are other options such as loan modifications, things like that. But it sounds like she's already done a lot of that. And for some reason, she's been denied and she's mixing up that safer program with the lender that doesn't have anything to do with that the safer program just pays money because we used it during a pandemic on uh tenants that wasn't paying rent and they do have a homeowner's safer program too it's a it's a program here uh in missouri for people who are behind on payments or behind on rent so that could be an option to catch up those arrears but goal number one right now would be to stop the auction and for me to do that i would need to get her information um and i would have to write up a purchase agreement send that over proof of funds and some other documents to the lender so we can actually uh, stop the uh, auction so what do you think about this post any comments below is this something that you would take on would you leave this alone would you say nah this look like it's a little too messy uh the property doesn't look too bad she said the condition was need some paint and some other things which every house needs something nice little brick house um with it's like a ranch in the basement. Uh, three bedroom, two bath, 1040 square feet. Zestimate says 169. So I don't know how good that is or not. She says she owes about 100,000. She's in arrears over 36,000 with fees and things. So we're going to see if we can make something happen with that. Um, hopefully we can. If we can, great. If not, we'll point her in the right direction. I'll pass her off to somebody else on the team to assist her with loan modifications, etc. cetera. Uh, but I'm the buyer. If you want to sell, I want to buy. So that's how we do it. So don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, give it a like, give it a share, and follow me on all social media outlets at Chris Monroe STL. That's Snapchat, that's Twitter, that's Instagram, that's Facebook, that's YouTube, that's TikTok, that's Clubhouse, that's X, that's Fanbase, and all the other sites. Same name everywhere, no excuse. People go, okay, fine, you, Chris. I had a deal for you. Chris Monroe STL on all social media. And if that ain't good enough, go to ChrisMonroeSTL.com. Come on now. No excuses. So do what you do. Be who you be. And I'll see you before you see me. Hey, Chris, is that you? Damn. You may have heard the saying, the fortunes are in the follow-up. Now there's a brand new system that is great to help you cold call, text message, drop voicemails, and so much more all automated. You don't have to remember anything, just set it and forget it. All you have to do is speak to people. Check it out, WokeReply.com. It's a multi-touch marketing campaign where you can schedule to send text, voicemail, email, and even live calls all on autopilot. Check it out today, WokeReply.com. That's WokeReply.com.